Social democracy is something that a lot of people don't understand. We can take a look at the definition of a social democracy. What it basically is, is the transition away from a capitalist based system towards a socialist based system. It's not this idea of having a mixed economy between capitalism and socialism, that's not the case. When you put this into practice, it fails. And it fails for the simple reason being that your economy heavily relies upon the private sector and I will get around to explaining that. Because a social democracy tries to rid the economy of the private sector and when put into practice, as a result of this failing, uh, there is no other option, there's no other way to get rid of private ownership without the means of force, without the means of government coercion. Even then, theoretically speaking, if you get rid of the private sector, you have to use the means of force in order to keep it out of sight. So you need basically an authoritarian dictator. If you're going to have to try and keep the private sector, if you're going to have to prevent individuals from owning their own private business, you've got no other means of doing that without the means of force. And you need to keep the means of force there in order to keep it out of sight. That's theoretically speaking, however, as I say. So, you know, why is the private sector so important? Many people don't realise the fact that the private sector is basically what finances the public sector. They don't realise that the public sector does not generate enough in order to basically pay taxation. So basically the public sector is paid their wages by government. So you, you then ask the question, where does government get the money from? Government gets the money from the private sector and it's the private sector taxpayers who are basically funding the wages of those who work for the public sector. And the whole issue with that, the reason why that's so important is because what social democracy tries to do is, is get rid of the private sector. So if you've got no private sector, where are you going to get the money from to finance all of these things? And um, people want to work for wages, and these these are important things. Um, and we can draw the contrast and the difference between your countries like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and all the rest of it. Uh, and then you compare that to the southern European countries, and you can see a, a contrasting difference between the two of them. Um, however, the most important point being here is the fact that it's the private sector that finances the entire economy. So. People who work for the public sector, they don't pay taxation, they pay what is called a rebate. A rebate is a percentage that is basically paid back to the government for what the government initially gave you in the first place. So if the government gives out wages, and I'm just making this up, if government gave out wages of say about a one billion pounds, and let's say for example, uh, it took back in a rebate about 500,000. All the government has done is basically taken a percentage back for what it initially gave you in the first place. That's not taxation. Um, and someone, obviously, a uh, boy, uh, argued the point that um, people who work for the public sector or consumers who buy goods in the private sector and all the rest of this, I don't think they understand, I don't think people like him understand that what the private sector did was it paid out wages to the public sector for the public sector to then um, basically to buy the goods. So in other words, you know, they're, 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 it's, it's the, the private sector that's financing them to enable the public sector to buy such goods. So they're, they're not the, the wealth creators of the economy, the wealth creators of the economy is the private sector. So you may then ask the question then, okay, well, if the likes of Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Germany, Luxembourg, if, if they're not social democracies, then what are they? They are what we call a social market economy. A social market economy is quite different. Yes, it's a mixed economy, but they're more capitalist in the sense that they do have strong market economies. The market is basically capitalism. And essentially what they have is strong private sectors 
that enables them to finance their economy, that's allowed them to essentially sustain themselves. This is the very reason why Denmark has lasted as long as it has. Because Denmark is a country with low levels of government regulation, low levels of government interference and, you know, almost no government protectionism with regards to its business. It's got strong economic business freedom. Um, however, it's socialist in the sense that it really does have your really high tax rates. Your extremely high tax rates, your massive big welfare state and all the rest of this. Um, so, there are, there are these elements that, as you know, they have a mixed economy and this is what their, their social market economy comprises of. Now I've addressed on this uh, several times, um, between 1870 to 1960, Sweden had a very strong free market, its economy had extremely low levels of government regulation, uh, low levels of government interference, it had the low tax rates etc. Uh, they never had the big extents of a welfare state. And thanks to the free market, they became the fourth richest nation per capita GDP by 1960. It wasn't until into the 1960s, throughout the 1970s, that of course Sweden began all the strong government interference, the strong government regulation, the high government tax rates, the massive big welfare state and all the rest of it and they began protecting you know failing industry from failing um, and you could kind of look at that from the perspective of the banking crisis because the, you know the banking crisis was the same story it was government protecting bad banks from failing the bad banks became too big to fail and of course the protection of the bad banks creating incompetency, which all led to the banking crisis of 2008. But in Sweden's circumstance, all of this had led to stagnation, uh, simply because of the strong government regulation, the lack of economic business freedom, etc. By the time the early 90s, Sweden had hit an economic crisis. And then, by the beginning of the 1990s, uh, into 1993, Sweden began to reverse those socialist policies. So in other words, if you, like I say, you look at it as a scale, and you could see their most successful economic time period was more under a free market between 1870 to 1960, and you then see the mess that socialism caused, between the 1960s to the early 90s and Sweden basically started pushing more after that although they still have a mixed economy what they basically did was they started pushing more towards a market-based economy and a market-based economy is more capitalist so it's like I say with this scale once Sweden began pushing further towards more capitalism on this scale, the economy was doing better. That's why between 1870 to 1960 it was their most successful economic time period, yet their economy today does not rival to what it used to be. So you may then ask the question, you know, what exactly is the problem with their style of economy? Why wouldn't we want to emulate them? Well, you know, for example, just look at Sweden's history as I say. I mean, the free market years before the 1960s, Sweden was far better off than what they are today. And Sweden, for the last 20 odd years, has had a social market economy which cannot rival what it once was, which was a free market. And Hong Kong, of course, is the perfect example between 1961 to 1997. Not only did they close the wealth gap between the rich and poor, um, proven by the Gini coefficient, uh, they went from an average household income of less than 5,000 to more than 34,000 plus. It's a frustrating thing that, of course, the, you know, regardless of what you put out there, a lot of people just seem to ignore um, the success of what Sweden was like prior to the 1960s or 
they stare blindly, you know, at something like Hong Kong and they just stare past it. And that's something that we should be more emulating what Sweden used to be or what, you know, um, Hong Kong used to be um, be before uh, when, when at least Hong Kong was part of um, Britain, um, when Britain occupied uh, Hong Kong. But, I mean, I think that's the reason why a lot of people in Hong Kong today wish they were uh, still part of Great Britain. Um, well, it's some it's part of the reason. So anyway, people, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and I shall talk to you later. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Right, cheers.